So I do have to come clean about something, even though I spend so much time in the Smokies and going around to some of the popular points that you go to for photography, I do not go to Cade's Cove. Now, I have no problem with the cove. I have no problem with what's there or what you can shoot there. My problem is the crowds. So many people come to the Smokies and only go to Cade's Cove and go up 441, the main highway that runs through the center of the park, but you know, it's probably been a solid six years since I've been to Cades Cove just because there's so many crowds. It's a one lane loop. There's so much back up there, but since I was in the park earlier this morning, and if you want to watch that video, you can select the card that's showing up on your screen right now. I stopped in to get coffee at literally the best coffee shop on the planet my favorite coffee shop ever um, but I decided since there weren't many crowds in the park this morning I'm gonna have a go and I'm gonna head into Cades Cove but I live in a world of paradox here because while I love the outdoors and one of my goals and one of my dreams is to photograph a bear in the Smokies I'm also terrified of seeing a bear while I'm out hiking. So it's this paradox of I want to see a bear, but I don't. So I'm going to go look for bears today in Kate's Cove. So before we get started driving around this loop, let's do some housekeeping things for what do you do when you drive around and look for wildlife. Now it's kind of like this blind adventure. You really have no idea where you're going or what you're going to see. So if you want to go out and photograph like wildlife, bison, bear, elk, whatever, helicopter. you need to do a couple of things for your camera and being ready to shoot whenever you see something. And I have some pretty good success of doing this, photographing elk, photographing bison, and then elk again. So I've been doing this for a while now. I don't always shoot wildlife, but when I do, these are the steps that I follow. Number one, get your camera ready, get your lens cleaned off and everything, and keep that lens cap off because you don't want to like see something and then think, well, my lens cap is on. Uh, what do I do now? And then you take your lens cap off and all of a sudden you've missed the shot Because animals move and they go out of the frame Number two thing you need to do is get your settings set up before you start driving around any loops or roads Now typically the settings that you're gonna use are something like the widest aperture that you can You're gonna use continuous autofocus tracking. You're gonna do a wide tracking across your entire frame because you don't want to use like point focus because then you're going to focus on something and that point in your lens area might not be on the wildlife that you're shooting. So use like a wide range of focus type and then use like a pretty fast shutter speed. So right now I'm on like an ISO of about 300. I'm shooting at f2.8 and then I have a shutter speed of ranging like 1 500th of a second to 1 350th of a second, just because we're dealing with like light and highlights and then also shadows today because it's partly cloudy. So those conditions are going in and out. Lastly, leave your camera on and get ready to go. Use the telephoto lens. I have on my Fuji X-T30 a 50 to 140 lens. I'd rather have something a little bit longer, but that's what I have with me today. And lastly, windows down, keep your camera in your lap, and be ready to shoot. So we had a bear sighting earlier, a mom and two cubs, but unfortunately a car came and a guy jumped out of his car and they ran off. So don't be that guy. But 
unfortunately, there are some horses grazing in here. And it's really cool, like, horses, big deal. A lot of people have seen them before. But it's cool to frame them up, like, against the mountains in the background if you do a wide shot and show the whole scene with the telephoto and really stack those distances together. It's a cool way to kind of like frame this up. Just got back to the campsite after an afternoon of driving around Cades Cove and photographing wildlife. Now we did get some photographs of the horses in that great landscape shot, but then we also got a shot of this buck that was looking at me, but also showing me his bud at the same time. I did see some other stuff too. I mean, turkeys, but I see those all the time. I saw four bears, I saw two adults and two cubs. Uh, the cubs were tiny, but they were just dodging in and out of trees and then jumping into the tall grass before I could get a shot of them. So. You know, didn't get any photographs of bears, but I think that begs the question, like, was this a successful day of photography? And to me, a successful photo doesn't necessarily mean what I was going out to get or having that, like, epic portfolio shot. I think that the process, I love the process of photography, going out, seeing nature, researching, knowing what the bears are going to do at what time of the year or what time of the day like stuff like that goes into photography and it's those countless hours that photographers spend in the outdoors of researching and knowing and figuring these things out that people don't see it's the back end work of all of that so i think measuring success by an epic photo at the end of the day isn't necessarily doing the day justice did you have fun being out, seeing nature, doing what you love to do, then it's probably an epic day and it's probably a successful day of shooting. I know I did have a good day um, today. No bears today, but uh, excited about the next time I get to go out and photograph bears. The search continues.